So anyways, before I get started, I just want to mention that uh, I, I totally remember you on those TV shows, The Flash and Quantico. So <laughs> fantastic. You, you, have the, you, you have those good looks that uh, that's always memorable on those Stop shows. It. I'm going to put that in my self-esteem bag right now. <laughs> <laughs> there you know, go. in this vortex, you don't get many, you know, many positive affirmations from the outside these days. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like, especially over, over Zoom, it's so weird not to be actually interacting with people. <laughs> Yeah, I guess gets that that's the new world now, or at least for now. It is, it is yeah. <laughs> so, uh, so tell tell us, Rick, uh, what what initially drew drew you to uh, you know to this Bolivian film to to me, Mancus? Yeah, it's um, you know, it it was so beautifully written, and it's really just you know it's a true story, and it was a play that was, became really a bit of a movement in Bolivia. And, um, you know, I loved the script and I just auditioned for it. It was a five page monologue audition. It was very long and I just really connected to all of it. And I, I think it really sat well on me and I just actually spoke in my natural accent, which I've never done before either. So it was the first time that I've done a film actually in my natural accent, whatever that natural accent might be. I don't know what it actually is, but um, yeah, it was, it was that. I think it was also, um, you know, a character that was a lot closer to me than I had played at the time. Um, and so I think it had that kind of resonance of, and that's what I believe the director probably saw. Now, before I get into the plot of, of the film, um, could you tell us more about your character that you played Chase for, for this film? Mm -hmm. So my character is an artist. Um, he's a fine artist. Um, he is kind of from the Midwest, uh, moved to New York City. Um, he's now living in Brooklyn. But when he first moved to New York, he kind of got into the trappings of being, I think, a young gay man in New York. Um, at the time, and I don't want to even say trappings, but, um, you know, and, and then he ended up contracting HIV. Um, he ends up, you know, going through this journey to become sort of the healthiest version of himself because he gets very paranoid about the disease um, on his body, you know, and what's good for him and what's not good for him. Um, and, you know, becomes super healthy and super, um, you know, just uh, obsessed, I guess is a good word for it in terms of health and his body and, um, you know, being really healthy and muscly and, um, you know, it's very life affirming, I think, you know, to, to move into that space when you kind of are chased by the, um, you know, the paranoia of, wasting way I guess you know which is what we've seen in the 90s of course it doesn't happen now so he's living with HIV now you know which of course with all the right drugs and everything you know it's pretty much exactly like living a normal life um uh but he's obviously that undertone you know as well and so I think in a way as well it was a way for him to express maybe the director like the, the way that that HIV is, you know, becoming destigmatized, and to also be part of that destigmatization of it, um, very normalized um, place. But you know, um, in terms of my character Chase, was you know that he, what he does, what he learns through this adversity, is really to love himself. And once he's learned that self love and that self, you know, soothing. Um, he does all this, all this stuff to take care of himself. Then he really opens up the channels for other people to be able to love him. And one of those people he comes in contact with is the main character, Gabriel's father, um, who's also another main character, um, played by Oscar Martinez. Um, so he sort of offers him a way in um, to loving his son who's, who's passed away. So yeah, that's basically my role in a bit of a nutshell. I I get a sense that uh, you you in real life 
is that uh, loving joy person um, also that you also, um, you know, That's nice. have, have, yeah. a, have, have that perspective, right? I think so. You know, I'm, I'm human and I, I, I come up against hopelessness as well. Um, but I think, yes, I think I was blessed as a child to, to have this kind of little magic, magical spark of cons consistent um, and just persistent hope. Yeah, persistent hope for for something better and 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 good things to come uh which which i'm super grateful for and uh, what i also realized you know we all have uh varying degrees at varying times uh, in, our, in our lives and we all have varying degrees of privilege as well obviously um but uh you know none no human gets gets away scot-free we all go through our own pain no matter no matter who we are or what we look like from the outside for for shits and giggles uh your character chase is an artist and um and there was some show off of some art can you come yeah. close can you come close to that type of art <laughs> for for yourself i wouldn't i wouldn't be audacious enough to say yes but uh no <laughs> the answer is no, I, I can't because I haven't refined my craft. Um, I was big into art at school. I, I won the art prize at school. Um, <laughs> so basically really cementing my answer, which is no. <laughs> if, if winning the art prize at high school is the height of my um, uh, fine art experience, then yeah, definitely not. <laughs> <laughs> Well, let, let, let me get into the, you know, the deep conversation about, about the topic of, of this film. The, re the reason why it's a Bolivian uh, Oscar entry is because it touched upon a very important subject, not, not just here in, you know, here like in the United States, but in a more conservative country like Bolivia, where the idea of coming out of the closet is, is sort of like a ta taboo. Now, yeah. um, um, I don't want to get into deep personal things, but you kind of went through a similar journey. If you can, can you talk about that? If you, if you would like to. Yeah, absolutely. Sure. Um, I actually, I actually, um, so I came out as gay when I was 19 at drama school, actually, it was really acting school that um, just the truth came galloping out. Thanks to all our incredible teachers and the curriculum at QUT where I went um, which was all a lot of actor studio exercises. How do I feel? Who am I? You know, I mean, uh, just really um, loosening up the channels of, as we say, emotional availability in terms of all your wonderful humanness. Okay. And so um, that kind of ended up happening at drama school. Thank goodness. Um, and it was never an issue in Australia. It was only when I came to the U S that I had, just the sense of like people or acting teachers or managers saying, you know, what, what do you think you should do about the gay thing or publicists saying, how would you like to handle the gay thing? And I was kind of like, you know, and you kind of end up going like, oh, okay. Um, and I totally understand them too, because they were protecting me. And thanks to them, they kind of got me through everyone mm -hmm. else's prejudice, you know, and protected me. So, but at the same time, this is what the situation is here. I mean, it was 10 years ago anyway. And it needs to change, you know, because um, it shouldn't be a thing. And I know we have to label things so that we can get rid of the prejudice, but hopefully we'll get there one day. Um, so anyway, then I realized that I'd kind of been lying by, um, uh, you know, by omission, um, by omission. <laughs> um, <laughs> <laughs> because you know for example on my instagram because i always want to just just do things for work you know i didn't want to my i never want my publicity to like outweigh my you know the actual work that i do mm -hmm. in terms of acting work um so and i also thought you know it's good to be mysterious and but it was kind of um you know veiling a certain amount of shame around the fact that people sometimes wouldn't trust you with a leading man role or you know, and I was just kind of sick of feeling stuck in the mud and feeling like, to be honest, like it wasn't even paying off for me. You know, 
<laughs> and I kind of had nothing to lose. First of all, like I also felt like I wanted to shake it up in terms of being honest and artistic and thought to myself, you know, I'd rather be on the cutting edge and ride the wave of truth than, you know, stay somewhere delusional. Um, so that happened at the same time, actually, that the film started coming out and was um, entered into the Oscars. And so we were doing a lot of screenings for Academy members um, at the time too. And having and sitting through that film, that first screening in, in Hollywood, um, and having to get up and talk afterwards, I was so emotional during the film. It affected me so much that it gave me so much courage to sit up there and then start talking about being gay and the fact that I'd never actually said it out loud before in front of people, especially Academy Award, uh, you know, Academy yeah. Oscar Academy members, just like um, who, who are in, in a way, you know, the ultimate in terms of, you know, where we aim in terms of obviously where we want our craft to be at. Um, so discussing all those things I just talked about, um, which, which are a bit taboo in terms of, you know, because we have to, agents are trying to make sure you're okay. Um, companies are make sure you're okay for different audiences, you know, different audiences in different spaces, more conservative audiences. Are they going to be okay with this? We're investing money, you know, capitalists. I mean, yeah, it's very complex, obviously. Um, but that was my journey, basically, um, you know, with the, with the film and my personal journey. It kind of, they kind of intersected you know, in a quite a beautiful way. It's also scary. <laughs> <laughs> so, so, so when you had the chance to do it on social media, were you, after all, it is 20, it was 2020 when that actually happened. Um, yes. Were, were you surprised of the reception, you know, the openness of people accepting you as you are? Yes. I was surprised not only by people's, yeah, people's joy, love, celebration, also like a ticket tape parade, you know, it was like very spectacular. Um, and also the reach that it had, you know, I, I kind of just forgot about it, woke up the next morning and got a text from my sister mm -hmm. saying, making headlines, dot, dot, dot. And I was like, what? And then, you know, it was like everywhere. Or, I mean, it was in newspapers all over, like, you know, and, and it was, it was just, I was like, wow, I didn't know people cared about me. First of all, great. <laughs> Love that. Um, you know, and it was kind of like, um, it was kind of cool, uh, to be honest. Um, you know, it was, it, it was great. It was great to be able to, yeah. I, I mean, Anderson Cooper saying my name, like, I was like, wow, that's, weird because i always watch his show <laughs> <laughs> that, that that is that is sort that is a a life of um you know highlight if uh anderson cooper even uh, d talked about that's you. right that's right <laughs> like life goals achieved <laughs> i mean hopefully my publicity doesn't outweigh my work you know? <laughs> you've always got something to worry about don't you <laughs> no, I, I think I think you're in pretty good shape with um, a, a film like this, you know, um, because because times have changed. But of course, you know, the, for the rest of the world still hasn't caught up with, you know, with a lot of developing countries. How important do you think films like this should be made? More of the, these should be made. Yeah, I mean, I, I think they're imperative. 100% because it's basically telling the truth um, on screen, telling a real life human story on screen. But um, more than that, I think um, it, it has been subconsciously taboo as well for, for people to talk about um, the relationship between a father, a straight father and his gay son, for example. Um, and something that, uh, you know, a lot of people can relate to in good and bad ways. And in terms of the, it's really kind of a warning in a way as to what happens when you don't embrace your child for who they are, no matter who that, no matter what that is. If you have any kind of fear or preconditioned, um, you know, uh, you know, preconditioned aversion to what your, what your child innately is, and you're not educated on that, then you are going to miss out on this whole world of love. 
um, this relationship, this, you can be, you know, this, the friendship with your child, um, all that incredible stuff. And I've seen it play out in real life too. In my life, I remember I gave someone advice once, a casting director about their son in an acting class years ago. Mm -hmm. And uh, he said, my son, you know, wants to dress up like a girl and uh, do all this sorts of stuff. And you look like a very well-adjusted person. Um, and I just heard, because I was doing a lot, you know, I was doing this exercise, of, you know, about something personal with my father. And I just gave him some simple advice um, about embracing, you know, his child for who they are, because otherwise he's going to really miss out. And he called me years later crying on the phone. Um, and um, I think, you know, and we I ended up catching up with them and everything. And he just has such an incredible relationship now. Um, so yeah, that's, I think that's the, the, the power, you know, of this, of this film. And, and the other side of that obviously is, you know, what happens in this film where, um, you know, his son ends up committing suicide. It's not a spoiler. I, I hope not because it happens at the very beginning. It does happen um, at the beginning. <laughs> I wasn't told what I was supposed to say or not say. Um, <laughs> just like free balling. It, yeah. it so, happened in the beginning. Is there's really no spoiler? <laughs> yeah, yeah, it does. I mean, it's the premise of the whole thing. So, you know, in a true story um, about what happened and what can happen and the impact that that can have a profound impact on people. Being little, we pick up on so many things, you know, um, in our surroundings i know the oprah's oprah's just got that book out what happened to you which is the top of the new york times bestseller right now um you know what happened to you because in those formative years when we feel othered or something obviously more traumatic happens in certain cases but this does you know feed into that um if you feel othered in terms of um, being gay when you're younger um it is it also it also it also has that adverse effect where it can it can affect you throughout your whole life in a really negative way um, as opposed to just simply being embraced um, at that age can really you know can really make you blossom and flourish and be successful and that is ultimately what parents want you to be um, mm -hmm. they just didn't know how to go about it you know great are, are you glad that you didn't have to speak spanish in this film <laughs> <laughs> yes because i would be bad at it <laughs> yeah unfortunately <laughs> yeah um i i am i will endeavor to learn more spanish my nephew is two months old and he's being taught spanish he's putting putting spanish in in at montessori nursery school so he's lucky it's it's so much easier when i think it's taught at that age and at this age it's like it, it takes a long time <laughs> <laughs> Now I'm, I'm going to, I'm going to ask an off the wall question that pertains to the movie. So I don't expect you to answer because uh, a lot of us probably don't remember, but there was a conversation about the, the seven categories of, you know, of, of, of gayness. Oh yes. <laughs> Do you know which category you fell under? I'm pretty sure I was like kind of shocked and, and, and um, fell into quite a few of those categories that I, maybe I didn't want to admit that I, fell into um <laughs> i mean <laughs> that was hysterical there are some absolutely hysterical moments in this film um in terms of how funny gay people can be <laughs> um but yeah i mean i think i think i fall into a number of different categories like i um you know like like people say what sex and the city char character are you you know i always think like i'm Charlotte on the inside and Samantha, Charlotte on the outside and Samantha on the inside. Um, you know, I sort of have this, I play this character, Jill, actually, um, on this new show I'm doing. And she is very much like very polite and very, because that's sort of the way we grew up in Zimbabwe as well, as Anglican, um, you know, white Zimbabweans. But then underneath it is this kind of, you know, is, is you, is this wild cracked broken <laughs> um, person yeah <laughs> great well I, I know i've taken a lot of your time already so i'm going to leave with one, one, one more thought here because we're, we're speaking via zoom right now because the world has gone a little bonkers yes how are you staying sane and creative during this entire time well i i work out i have a gym in my garage now 
um, I've created this TV show called Jill and Sue, which I was telling you about, which people can actually follow on Instagram. It's called At The Borkloos Daily. Um, and we're developing into a TV show. Um, meditation. Uh, I've got a brand new little nephew who lives around the corner from me. So that's been keeping us occupied. Walks, journaling, um, cooking. Oh. Um, I moved to a place with lots of lawn because I needed nature and I love grass. <laughs> um, yeah, just constantly shaking things up, constantly dancing. I dance to make me happy when I'm working out, sometimes put on music. And you always forget when you're in your worst place, you mm -hmm. always forget to do the things that put you back onto your center. So in those moments, I encourage people to really, okay, put the music on, you know, go and cook, cook your meal, get out there, do a little run around the block. Um, it can make all the difference to your entire day. Quick check-in. Um, yeah, luckily I've had, I've had wondrous life coaches and, and therapists in Los <laughs> Angeles to keep me, um, keep me alive, you know, with a pretty crazy upbringing. But um, I've also had a privileged upbringing, so I can't complain. <laughs> <laughs> that is an excellent answer well hey rick hey thank you uh, for conversing with me and uh, stay joyful thank you so much hey, you too you too honestly you're amazing and thank you for those questions hey thank you appreciate it bye bye